Hi kids, I have a story to tell you that takes us right back to the beginning. In the beginning, God made everything, everything that we can see. He made the stars, including the sun. He made the moon and the planets, including the earth that we live on. He made everything. He made the trees and all the plants. He made the land and the sea. He made all the animals that live on the land and live in the sea and fly in the air. And last of all, and best of all, he made a man and a woman. The man and the woman were the best part of his making, his creation. And everything he saw, he said was good, very good. And it was good, because God had made it all. And with the man and the woman, now all was perfect in the world that he made. And everything God made filled his heart with love. It was so wonderful and beautiful. It was perfect. Everything he made, the stars, the moon, the planets, the trees, the plants, the fish, the birds, the animals, the man and the woman, in their own way, sang together for joy, for happiness, at all that God had made. For it was good and it was lovely. But there was one thing God had said that the man and the woman weren't to do. Everything in the garden was theirs, but there was just one thing. God said, that special tree in the middle of the garden, don't touch it. Don't eat from it. Because if you do, everything will go wrong. The tree wasn't bad. The fruit wasn't poisonous. But God said to them, don't touch it. Don't eat it. And God knows what is best. One day, the woman, whose name was Eve, was walking in the garden and she was quite close to the tree itself. And she looked at it and she thought, this is the tree that God said we mustn't eat of. And she looked at it and it was indeed beautiful. The fruit smelt sweet, delightful. Mmm. Just love to sink your teeth into it. It was so beautiful. And as she looked at it, someone spoke to her. As she looked around, because the only other person that spoke besides God was Adam, her husband. And as she looked, she saw there a snake, one of the creatures that God had made. And the snake whispered to her. The snake said to her, God doesn't really love you. He wants to keep the fruit for himself. And Eve thought and looked at the tree, smelt the fruit, and she thought, I wonder, would it make me happy to eat the fruit? But no, she was happy already. She was always happy, whether excitedly happy, running and playing games with the animals in the park, in the, in the garden there, or whether quietly happy watching the sunset with Adam. She was always happy. But she let that thought, which was indeed one of these, that thought that the snake had told her, it was a lie. God doesn't really love you. He said, no, 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 no. God doesn't really love you. And she let the thought sink down inside her, deep inside. And the more it sank down inside her, the more she longed to have the fruit. So she took some of the fruit and she ate it. And she gave some to Adam and he ate it. And everything began to go dark and frightening and bad. God was so sad. The world he'd made, the man and woman he'd made that was so good, that filled his heart with love, were turning bad. And he knew that everything from then on would get worse and worse and worse and worse. God told them they had to leave. They had to leave their garden home where everything was wonderful or had been. You must go, he said. You cannot stay in this perfect garden. Nothing broken and wrong and bad can live there. But God cared for them. 
God still loved them. Despite the lie, God doesn't really love you. God gave them clothes to wear because it was going to be cold outside. And God sent them away. But before he did, he said to them, One day I will come back and I will make everything good again. Long time passed. Some people forgot God's promise, but God never forgets. One day, he came. And his name is Jesus. Jesus, God's son. God, the son. They're all one and the same. God came down to earth, just like you and me. He grew up from a baby to be a full-grown man. And as a full-grown man, he went about being good. He was always good, really good, perfectly good. Good like the sun shining on a, on a beautiful day. He went about doing good, helping people, healing people, comforting people and teaching the people about God and the way back to him. He was doing so much that was good. But the most important thing he came to do had yet to be done and it was the hardest and the most terrible thing he had to do. Way back, he and his father had made the plan for how to bring God's children back to him. How to get rid of the poison of the lie that had made everything go bad. And that was that everything that was bad, that was wicked, that was horrible, that was like the poison of the lie, from the poison of the lie, the bad things people do to each other, all that would be dumped upon Jesus and poured into his heart, all that horror and dreadful fear and loneliness was all going to come on him. That meant it was going to be poured into God's heart. This was God's plan to bring people back to him, to bring his children home. One day, when the time had come for Jesus to do that, which was the hardest thing, he went to a garden that he loved, another garden. And he took some friends with him, some of his closest friends, and he said to them, please stay with me, I'm so sad. Please stay with me, stay awake and pray with me and pray for me. But they were so tired and so sad themselves, so upset that they all went to sleep. Here's another one here. They had a rock to sleep from with his head there. They all fell asleep. I hope they tried a bit. I suspect they did, but it was all too much for them. They couldn't stay awake. And so they slept while Jesus was crying out to his father. Jesus went alone. No one with him now. He went alone to pray. He lifted his hands in prayer to God his Father. And he cried out to God his Father. The way we might have cried out when we were in trouble. To our earthly fathers or to mum. He called out the way that we would have called out. He said, Papa, Daddy, to his Father in heaven. Is there no other way? Isn't there any other way to bring your children back to you? But there was no answer from God. No answer from God the Father. Jesus knew there was no other way. But he was so, so sad and so cast down by what had to be done that the words came from him. Poor Jesus, the Son of God, but there was no answer. It was like there was just thick darkness between him and his heavenly Father. He cried and cried, shedding bitter tears on the ground. The sobs shook his whole body as he looked at what was to happen. He knew that he would be cut off from his Father because that's what wickedness and badness does. He knew it was going to be like that for him. He had never been cut off, separate from his Father in heaven. And he knew that it would be on him soon. But then Jesus became quiet. 
like a little lamb. And he said again, Papa, Father, whatever you say, I will do it. And when men came with swords and clubs and other weapons into the garden, he gave himself up to them. Not that he couldn't have rescued himself, he could have called armies of angels, but he had a job to do. And so he let himself be arrested, taken away, lies told about him, and then condemned to die. But he did it for us. He did it for you and me. There was no other way. God himself dying to bring his children back to him. What a wonderful thing this is. Horrible, but wonderful, that God should love us so much that he wants to bring us back to himself. He wants to bring us back to be home with him forever. I hope you all remember this, that God made everything good, that he loved what he'd made, and he loves it still. And he showed that love to us by allowing Jesus, God's Son, to die in our place. What a wonderful thing that is. It's beyond understanding, but it tells us that God loves us. That's the story of the Bible. And if you don't remember anything else from the Bible, perhaps for a long time, remember this. God loves and cares for you, and he wants you to come back to him through Jesus, the great rescuer that God has sent.